Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export For You and welcome to part zero of my let's play of Momless Quest Paradox RPG Confrontation Chapter. We've just defeated Adramelk at the end of Catalyst Chapter and now we get the chance to review everything we've done on our journey so far. So before going to the Noah region, let's confirm. All right, strategic meeting it is then. So we saw this world end. And there are all kinds of incidents happening all over the world. So let's have a meeting, go over everything. Of course, the real reason is it may have been a while since you played the last chapter. But anyway, review time. So we witnessed the spectacle of a world ending. And it seems that that conclusion is going to come to all of the worlds sooner or later. But we don't want that to happen to our world, certainly. Promistine agrees. Hilda wants to protect the world. That's what she was made for. Q Q. Nuriko always has the best commentary. Okay, so everybody's in agreement. So let's confirm what we know. Starting with the Tartaros. So the Tartaros are seven different chasms that opened up in the world 30 years ago in the big cataclysm. And what they are is actually a tunnel between a number of parallel worlds. So these parallel worlds are different from the world we know. It seems that what occurred in each world differs. And also their timelines. We went to a world where Sonia and Luca were dead some decades in the future. Promising thinks that's something that might happen, but it certainly didn't happen in the past. The possibility is there. Also, in the Tartarus in the Sabasa reason, we saw that world end there. And we managed to learn what happened. It's erosion by chaos, followed by ultimate destruction. And furthermore, all of the worlds, all the parallel worlds, will come to that end sooner or later. And ours is, an is not an ex exception. In that world, we got the notes Lacro entrusted to us. We need to give them to the Lacro out we'll find in our world. That's one of our objections on objectives on the journey. We got to find where Lacroa lives in our world. Promistine will study the notes herself, but with her knowledge as it stands, there's a lot she's not going to understand. But this whole paradox thing, this is what's causing all the worlds to be destroyed, but we don't know the cause of it. But, just thinking about it won't get us anywhere. There's nothing to be doing but exploring the other Tartaros. So, there are four remaining. We're headed towards the Noah region next, and there's a Tartaros in there. It would be north of Esta, which is a village that had all of its people disappear. Sonia thinks there's some type of connection. Well, we gotta go to find out. After all, the exploration of the Tartaros is our highest priority objective. Yeah, we need to find out what's going on in the world. So, we're exploring. 
So these remaining four tower turtles. These four, we wonder what kind of worlds we're going to travel to. So if we explore all of them, we might find the cause of the paradox. So if we don't know what happened, we don't if we don't have better information on what's causing the chaos spread, we're not going to have any way to avoid being, you know, obliterated. So, next up, Lucas Father. So, Lucas Father, Markers. Luca went out on his journey in the first place in order to find his father. Yeah, way back when. To think it came to this. So, continuing our journey, we eventually did meet up with him. In that world that was about to be destroyed. So, Markers is still traveling these different worlds. And apparently he knows something about the mysteries we're trying to seek out. He told us to keep history on the proper path. And in order to do that, we need to join contracts with the four spirits. Because in the proper history, Luca contracted with the four of them. So by doing the same thing here, we keep the flow of time more stable. And if the time flow gets disordered, the chaos will start to spread more rapidly. So, yeah. Or, to be more accurate, if we diverge from the true history, then the destruction will be sped. So, like Luca's dad told him, we need a contract with the Four Spirits. If by doing this we can defer the destruction of the world, that's good. Up to now we have Gnome and Sylph contracted. Next up would be, in the Noah region, Undine. But, just by following the actions of the proper history, we're not going to prevent the destruction of the world. We're going to defer it, but it can't be prevented. That's a nuance we need to remember. So, we basically can't solve this. But even if we can slow down the destruction a little bit, we should do that. And while we're doing it, we need to search out in a way to actually stop it. In any case, we do need to search out Markers again. Just like Luca's original intention had been. Right? There's gotta be something he can tell us. So, two more spirits. And following it, following Luca's father. Both of these are important to saving the world. So, let's remember to do that. Now, the four countries at war. This didn't really come into play in the Catalyst chapter. It was mentioned a time or two. But anyway. There are four great countries in the world. One of them, Grangold, is at war with the other three. You see, this magic country, Grandogold, all of a sudden attacked the neighboring country, Grandinoa. So Grand Noah entered into an alliance with Sarasa and San Ilya against Grand Gold's aggression. So where we're going next is the Noah region, where Grand Noah is. Did you catch that? Did you see what they did there? Noah and Grand Noah. Oh man, these guys are good. So we're running wide in, right into a war zone. 
And naturally, it's going to have some difficulties. Normally, we wouldn't get involved in this war between all the countries, but there are various suspicious points in this. First of all, Grangold's actions are bizarre. Ever since the current king took the throne, they shut their borders completely. And then, all of a sudden, they attack. The Gold Army is made of uh, ant girls and mechanical puppets. And they infiltrated into Grand Noah. Now, furthermore, the king of Grand Gold himself, it's said that he isn't even a human. He's got a great number, great amount of magic power, and there was a time when he was impaled, you know, with a blade, and he didn't die. So we gotta suspect he's not normal. Yeah, Sonia, definitely not normal. Then there's Grand Noah. They were on the receiving end of the attack. And we happen to know that the Grand Vizier of the Kingdom, who advises, of course, the Queen, is not a human, but a monster. Well, monsters are cool. We get to stare at Elias for about another 40 minutes, probably. Did I say Elias? This is Alice. Anyway, she's a monster too. In any case, monster advising the queen. Alice is a bit concerned about that. And then there's Sabasa. The queen, Sara, was manipulated by the three Lilith sisters. Oh man, these countries are all messed up. So, it seems that the monsters are behind this great war, without a doubt. Particularly, the actions of the three Lilith sisters have been bothering Alice. Those three have enough power to really disorder the world. It may turn out that we'll have to get involved in this war. So when we go to Grand Noah, we had better be prepared. Maybe you can tell us to be prepared. We don't want to get involved in a war. <sighs> but that's how it is. So, four countries, war. And there's something behind everything. What's next? Oh yes, the three mouths. So... Alice has lost her title of Mao, and currently there are three other people competing for it. First of all, Alice's mother, Alice Fees the 15th. She's got control of the Mao Goon, the Mao army, so she's closest to being called the proper Mao at this point. She disappeared some time ago. And she was thought dead, but for some reason, she came back. And Alice got chased out. Her mother's taking control. And Alice has been cut out of the loop. She doesn't know what's going on over there. That's pretty tough. Why are our parents so hard of a, so rough on giving us explanations? Yeah, both of us just have to chase after our parents like this. It's rough. But let's continue. The next one is Black Alice. Once upon a time defeated by Heinrich, but it seems she's still alive. Amongst all the Maos, and if ours is the 16th here, so that's quite a few, she's got the highest, he's, she has got the highest class of magic power. But, up to now, she hasn't really done anything. At least nothing's that come that has come to our ears. So in the Heinrich lesson, she was quite the violent now. If we mess with her ineptly, we're going to have a 
Well, it's gonna be a mess. A big bloody mess. Oh, I can't wait! I can! Geez, not everybody's a hero maniac like you, Luca. <sighs> Come to think of it, since they were small when we did when we played hero, Sonya always got stuck playing as Black Alice. And we don't need to say Luca got to be Heinrich. But he never won against Sonia's Black Alice. Not even once. He never won. Hey, are you making me bad here? Alright, enough reminiscing you two. Back to the three mouths. So, next. Nedis. The self-styled Alice Fees the 17th. She is a complete mystery. There is that narrow guy with whom Neris seems to be connected. They kind of spoke like they were siblings. So these Nero, this Nero and Neris pair. We don't know their objective and we don't know their real nature. But they are very powerful, both of them. So, but, for whatever reason, they helped us out a couple of times. It kind of seemed like a whim at times, but... Well, at the very least, they don't seem to be our enemies. Although they're too distant to call our allies, either. So all three of these models are... in motion, doing whatever. It may be that they'll be opposed to us at some point as well. It doesn't seem like they'll be seeking us out yet. But we better be careful. So, what's next? The Three Sisters and the Seraphim. So on our journey so far, there's been some bizarre persons showing up. Behind the scenes of the world, they're, you know, pulling strings, working machinations and things. The three little sisters are legendary succubi. They made their names in the Holy Wars between Alice Fees I and Elias. If the three of them are back, well, they're presently disordering the world, so I guess we can assume so. They were the underlings of Minagi, one of the six ancestors. In the, whole, in the Holy Wars, they managed to kill a lot of angels. So they manipulated the Queen of Sabasa, and they annihilated the Luddite village. It looks like they aren't doing it on a whim either. They've got a, they've got an objective, but we don't know what. And Alice's mother, the 15th, seems to be connected to them behind the scenes. It looks like, without a doubt, we'll be facing those three as an enemy. on the other side, these mysterious seraphim have also appeared before us, Shion and Gnosis. Both of them are high-class angels. And both of them are second-age angels, whatever that means. And I think it's supposed to mean they were created after the Holy Wars. In any case, there are three seraphim, not two. But if the two have come down, the final Seraphim will also be on the world doing something, most likely. So these three are opposed to the Lilith sisters. Hell, yeah, we saw them fight once. But the enemy of our enemy is not our friend. 
The angels are also not really pleased with us. So, both sides here seem to be connected to these incidents throughout the world. They've got their own plans they're advancing while we're doing our thing. So, are they acting to destroy the world? Well, the three little sisters say their objective is to save the world. Whether that's true or not, we have no way of judging, however. In any case, those suspicious bastards are both going to be getting in our way, so we've got to be wary of them, too. Mysterious demons and t angels. What fun. Oh, we're almost done. The White Rabbit. So, the person we know the least about is the one who transformed Alice into this form. The White Rabbit. She says that her role here is to guide Alice, but... Alice has her doubts. And Sonia points out that following her, as we have so far, we did manage to find some stuff out about these parallel worlds. Was that her guiding us in her own way? Well, the end result is we did learn about this. But, what's her plan? So, going forward, She's definitely going to appear in front of us again. We've got to capture her Skinner sometime. Ha <laughs> ha. Alice, you're such a kidder. Alright. So, what do we do next? Ah, oh, nice. In case we want to review the information again, she gives us a chance to back out. No, let's go forward. So, our biggest objective is to save the world. There's this destruction bearing down on it, and we've got to avoid it somehow. So, in order to fulfill that objectives, there are things we have to do. First of all, exploring the four Tartaros, the remaining four Tartaros. There's one in the Chiho, in the Noah region, one in the Gold region, one in the Remino ruins, and further one, one in the center of the Great Continent. I wonder why they still call it one continent. You should see the map. That Tartaros messed up that continent. Okay, first of the Tartaros is the one in the Noah region. But that's our first priority, exploring the Tartaros. And then there's chasing down Luca's father, Mark Harris. This is kind of piled in with exploring the Tartaros. And that's because Luca's father is still traveling between the different worlds. Yeah, searching for his father. That was Luca's original goal in his journey. Alright. Also, there are the remaining two spirits we need to contract with. Undina is in the Neoa region, and Salamander is in the Gold region. Since we're going to Noah next, Undina is up. So these contracts with the spirits. According to the proper history, that's what we do, so better get to it. Then, finally, we need to give the Lacro's notes to himself in this world. But it is completely unknown where Loa Croa is. As we continue on our journey, we need to gather information. I have a guess. I bet it's Ramina, or somewhere in the vicinity. Huh. But I'm not going to know that until part three comes up. 
or rather, what do I call it? The climax chapter. In any case, those notes are the hope entrusted to us from that destroyed world. So we better do that. So that's what we need to do. Man, that's a lot. Ha. Uh, Well, ultimately, it's all bundled together one way or another. After all, saving the world from this crisis is our biggest objective. Alright. Our next destination is the central region's northwest portion, the Noah region. So, we finally get to go to the port of Marlport. Oh man, they really did have that. Translation sort of pain. It's kind of closed off, but in any case, if we go through the cave north of Luddite, we'll get to it. There we need to get our hands on a boat and cross over to Grand Noah. Given that there's a war on, it'll be kind of tough though. Well, we better go and try it. It's better than stanking around worrying here. Alright. Right you are. So, let's go through that cave and get to Marlport. QQ! Ah, Nudicle's hilarious. Alright. Short version, that's what we need to do. Mm. Let's see. Some of you who may have watched my previous Let's Play of the Catalyst chapter, could recall that I actually played it with Elias instead of Alice. But you know what, I actually like Elias more. And I like Alice more. Well, everybody likes Alice more. So I decided to make a new game with Alice instead of Elias. In any case, Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time when we pass through this cave and get to Marlport. See what's up over there.